knowing the right tools in Blender can save you a ton of time. Here's a quick UV tip. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is go and grab a texture that you want to use. I'm going to use this road one here from textures.com and you can go ahead and find the link down below in the description. Um, I think I'm going to use one that's symmetrical. I'm going to pick the single dashed line one. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the default cube and add in a plane. Now you could add an image as a plane in order to do this. However, I want to attach all of my textures to this plane. So to make sure that I can do this really quick, I'm going to go to the edit menu, go down to preferences and go to add-ons. We're going to make sure that the node wrangler is enabled. This is going to be crucial for our next step. Okay, go into the shading workspace. We're going to create a new material, select the principled BSDF and press control, shift and T. This won't work unless you've got node wrangler enabled and we're going to go and select all of the downloads that we've just done. It will automatically connect it for us and there we go, we can see it's on there. Now, this looks to me like the normal map is a bit strong and perhaps even the displacement map. So I'm going to turn down the strength of that and the scale of the displacement. Otherwise, this would be a really horrible road to drive along. Okay, so we're going to hop into the UV editing workspace and switch over to the diffuse texture so we can actually see it. Now we have a couple of options here to make the scale correct. We could scale down the UV map itself on the X axis, making sure that it actually fits a square profile. However, I don't want square chunks of road. I actually want it to be a rectangle. So I'm going to undo what I just did to the UV map and instead in edit mode over in the 3D editor window, I'm going to scale it on the X axis by two. And this will make it fit and scale perfectly. Okay, so we've now got a straight section of road, but how about making things bendy, a curve going around a corner? Now, this is something that I would often in the past have just gone in and done a lot of complex UV mapping. But what we can actually do is have a simple deform modifier applied to our model. We want it to be a bend at 90 degrees. We're gonna sweep around 90 degrees, and it's not gonna work straight away. We need to move it so that the start of the bend is where the origin point is. Now you can see at the moment, I've got that smack bang in the middle, but we'll move that later on. We don't have enough geometry in order to bend it at the moment. So rather than going in and adding geometry, I'm gonna use a subdivision surface modifier. We're gonna lift it so it's the first thing that happens. So we're generating the geometry first and I'm gonna make sure it's simple. I don't need anything curved here. I just need extra geometry. And I'm gonna bump that up to five. Four looked okay as well. So we've got a basic curve sweeping round, but my problem with this is it doesn't actually fit into anything like a unit. So this is gonna be difficult to add to various places. So the first thing I'm gonna do is move it on the Y axis here. So the corner of the outside or the inside, depends what you want to work on, exactly matches where the origin is itself. Okay, so the final challenge that I have here is making sure that this bends around into the right place. At the moment, it's going to an arbitrary place and it's gonna be difficult to fit it into other unit sized pieces. So I really want it to stop here at where X and Y both equal two. Now, at the moment, it doesn't matter whether I use local or global coordinates, but what I need to do is change the position so the length of the longest side is pi. And now in order to do that, you can just type in pi into the transform. Now we need to do it to both vertices. So I'm gonna select the other one as well. And notice when we do this, everything moves and snaps bang into place. Perfect. So this is a very quick way of making turns and degrees and without having to have a complex UV unwrap. Hope you've enjoyed that. And if you want to learn a bit more about Blender, check out this video.